it's Ashley and I'm back <laughs> with another reaction video. Uh, this one is me reacting to 13 insane problems with 13 reasons why. They, uh, I recently just finished watching the final season and it was a uh, emotional like I cried at the end if you've seen it you know why if you're watching this you probably already seen it but I cried uh, when Justin found out he was diagnosed with AIDS uh, and he ended up dying I just thought that it was well they might talk about it in here so I'm not I'll just talk I'll just talk about it if it's brought up if it's not the things that aren't mentioned I'll just save to the end but if you have not seen 13 Reasons Why, let's do a little intro for it. Um, 13, 13 Reasons Why is an American teen drama web television series developed by Netflix by Brian Yorkie. Based on the 2007 novel 13 Reasons Why, 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher, the series revolves around high school student Clay Jensen in the aftermath of high school student Hannah Baker's suicide, leaving behind a box of cassette tapes in which she details why she chose to end her life. Through the various storylines, in uh, the show explores and depicts a wide range of social issues affecting modern youth, including suicide, sexual assault, bullying, racism, jock culture, mental health, uh, drug addiction, domestic violence, homophobia, deportation, police brutality, steroid use, homelessness, HIV, abortion, and school shootings. The series is produced by July Moon Productions, Kick to the Curb Productions. I thought, I thought they were saying like, oh, they got rid of them, but no. Uh, Kick to the Curb Productions, Anonymous Content, and Paramount Television, with Yorkie and Diana Sun serving as showrunners. Uh, Dylan Minette stars as Clay Jensen, while Katherine Langford plays Hannah Baker. Um... And they just go through the rest of the cast. The last season, they did have Gary Sinise, who I love. And um, Selena Gomez was set to star as Hannah uh, before they shelved it, which I didn't know. I, I know, like, whenever it talks about it, they link Selena Gomez to it. And I thought she was, it was more because she was part of, like, the... Uh, was it production or producer producer storyline um, and I guess that's because it was shelved so by the time they actually got around to doing it she wasn't in it so oh, she wasn't gonna star in it before being shelved in favor of a television series and Netflix ordering an adaptation as a limited series in October 2015 with Gomez instead serving as an executive producer. Okay, there we go. Um, the first season was released on March 31st, 2017. It received positive reviews from critics and audiences who praised its subject matter, the acting, particularly the performances of Manette and Langford. They all the cast are they're very good good most of the cast overall the cast <laughs> because I'm not gonna say all of them there are little people who aren't that great but the cast overall um, are really well do really well um, Langford received a Golden Globe Award nominee for best, best actress television drama uh, however, its graphic depiction of, depiction of issues such as suicide and rape, along with other mature content, prompt, prompt content <laughs> prompted concerns from mental health professionals. In response, Netflix added a warning card, and uh, from March 2018 on, a video that plays at the start of each season, warning viewers about its themes. In 2019, Netflix edited out the suicide scene in the first season's final episode. 
And then in March 2017, Netflix renewed 13 Reasons Why for a second season due to the success of the initial 13 episodes. The second season was released in 2018 and received mixed to negative reviews from audiences. Coinciding with the release of the second season, Netflix released a video with the cast that cautioned viewers on some of the topics covered in the show and provided a support website with crisis numbers for people affected by depression, anxiety, and other, other, other mental health issues. A third season was ordered in June 2018 and re was released on August 23rd, 2019. In August 2019, the series was renewed for a fourth and final season, which premiered on June 5th, 2020. Uh, okay. So, I think most people already know about the show, even though I gave reference and, like, the backstory of, of it. Uh, the themes depicted, they do, I think they do a, a really great um, job of depicting how I would assume life would be for college or teenagers nowadays, especially with them being able to access so much stuff with the internet and having uh, so much information at their fingertips now. But I think that I think a lot of the things depicted are things that happen to in all generations I think it's just amplified now because we have the internet and there's actual uh, time there's actual since there's actual evidence of these things happening and people being able to connect with each other we are seeing that it's not just um, oh this happened in my hometown too or this happened in my hometown it can't be like it's just a one-time thing or a one-off thing with the internet we see that these are current or these are current issues these are past issues but we can keep track of how often they happen and how uh, how how they like develop and change it to something else that cause mental issues because that's the thing too is all of these things do happen to people to college or to teen, I keep saying college. These things do happen to teenagers, but most teenagers, like myself, I didn't really talk to my mom about how I was doing in school. I talked to my friends, and they do a good job of showing that as well in the show. And the scenes where they do depict these things can be very triggering and um, graphic and. I think they did a good job, but I know some people might not be able to stomach it as well as I did when I seen the scene where Hannah took her life in the end of season one. It was shocking, and it was, I don't think they glorified it. I made, I, it was horrifying, and I didn't get anything glorifying out of it, but... I could see how some parents might be concerned that their kids would think it is. So I think a good thing, it was a good thing that they started to do these trigger warnings at the beginning of the show and giving resources because um, I don't think, I feel like they did talk about it, but it was always at the end of the episode. And I think they, them including it at the beginning and at the end and uh doing the after hour after show episodes with the cast where they discuss it and how it affected them even though it wasn't like their real life they had to portray it and act it out and kind of get the emotions that the people who would really be affected to by it uh would have and I think it opened up a lot of discussions with family, friends, or help, just gave people the push to go and find these resources that they might not be aware of. 
because you have the yeah whereas we have the internet and it's readily available to us but sometimes you just don't know where to look so <laughs> I say all that to say the last season was crazy and I think it was kind of shitty and kind of like over the top with trying to get its message across talking about the different topics that they wanted to explore but anywho let's go ahead and watch uh think stories uh 13 insane problems with 13's reason 13 reasons why Riots, racism, and surprise viruses that kill you in a matter of days. No, it's not the year 2020. This is the latest season of 13 Reasons Why. For those of you who are familiar with my channel, I tend to do ending explain videos for these types of shows. But as I got further into the season, there were some major, absolutely bonkers events in this show that yes. simply could not be explained. Oh, man. So I came up with 13 <laughs> major problems with season 4. I actually came up with 30, but these are my top 13. <laughs> now, if you haven't okay. seen the show or the latest season, don't worry. I'll try to provide the proper context for each of these points so you can follow along. In no particular order let's get into it number one the adult spying cabal over the course of the season the kids get the sneaking suspicion that someone or something has been spying on them what if they're watching all of us yeah Oh, that's what I don't get for example Jess's father knew about the find your drink party and Clay's mom knew he was at the mall even though he never mentioned it that's because the parents have secretly been yeah this part I was like Okay. And the parents are putting shit on their kids' phones, like. And why would you make it known by saying stuff that you know that you shouldn't know about as a parent? Like, the dad, uh, like he just said with Jessica, saying, oh, are you going to a party tonight? And she's like, yeah, how did you know about it? He's like, oh, I just, you know, I just heard about it. Get out of here. And it together to create an app that spies on their children. We know many of you have downloaded Dave's apps to read emails and texts, follow online activity, geotrack your kids. But if you don't have the apps yet, uh, just talk to Dave. Never mind how this is totally illegal. Let's just think about the ethics of this. Do you really want parents having access to your kids' webcams, private emails? The potential for abuse here is staggering, not to mention the complete breach. It's like that episode of Black Mirror where the mom thought she was protecting her daughter by having um, violence or just things that she didn't want her to see to protect her. And how did that end up, end up for her? To privacy. I mean, God knows what my parents would find if they had access to my search history. And what about the parents? Is there not one parent in an entire school that's thinking, hey, I want to protect my kid and all, but this is completely unethical. So we're supposed to believe that roughly hundreds of parents kept this as a secret. Then there's the logistics of creating an app that can do all these things. Usually texts are so deeply encrypted that even the FBI, for example, has struggled to find backdoors to the iPhone. But this app is like the Swiss army knife of apps. It can somehow uncover texts, emails, geolocate your kid, follow what they're searching. To develop this would take years and a team of experienced coders, if at all possible. But apparently Dave can do it in a few weeks. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Number two, the school sh episode. About halfway through the season, the show tackles one of the most serious issues facing young kids today school shings. i had to bleep it out or else i'll get demonetized thank you youtube over the course of this absolutely i don't get monetized so that's why i kind of don't so bleep we shit see out the on my trauma channel. all these kids go through just calls her mother mother and tells her she loves her as bullets can be heard in the background tyler holds up in the girl's washroom thinking he'll be the next one to die and one of the 
Knox experiences a mental breakdown. It's terrifying. And then what happens? This episode. <laughs> it's just a drill. Yes, the principal does. That started was... to stage a mock drill that involved police dressed up in army camp. Can you pause? Thank you. Right, like, uh, really? Does that like, I know it's like a fiction, but like, really? If you want it to be more realistic, can you not? I thought it was a real school shooting too when I seen it. So when Clay flipped out, I kind of agreed with him it it except for when he grabbed the fucking fucking police officer's gun like really bitch now nah, i know you're off the deep end like his whole the whole season we are questioning his sanity and there's multiple times where i'm like he might want to we might want to commit him like seriously and then when it does happen stupid hopefully he talks about it <laughs> like going off on the tangent and I said I wasn't Hello. going to. Bullet blanks to recreate the actual sounds of gunfire, and he didn't bother to tell any of the teachers. This is so horrendously unethical, I don't even know where to begin. The amount of trauma these kids went through on this day is enough to scar them for life. It's so bad, in fact, that it triggers one of Clay's dissociative episodes, and he steals one of the officer's guns. Hey, stop! Hey, I you now! Oh, I've got your gun! <laughs> Secondly, I find it unbelievable how this all played out. All the school's entrances have metal detectors, and the guards are all armed and patrol the halls, yet none of the students mentioned this. No one was like, hey, we have like 10 armed guards at this school, we'll be fine. And now, it's been a few years since I've been to high school, but can someone in the comments answer me? They do it self-aid buddy care? I, I did that in the military. Are they really teaching kids this in high school now? That's probably what he's about to say, but I also want to know. If schools have gotten so bad that kids are actually taught how to mend bullet wounds? Is this a real thing? Now, this is going to segue into my third point. Almost none of the characters face any repercussions for none. their actions. None. Let's start with <laughs> Principal Bullen, who did this drill. Faces no repercussions or backlash nope. from the parents. But there's one character in particular who gets away with the most ludicrous Clay. things, yet is still allowed to attend school when it's clear he needs professional help. I'm talking, of course, about Clay. So let's take a look at some of his greatest hits. Clay covered in fake blood. <laughs> interrupts the school dance while holding a knife. Nothing happens. Clay is found hovering over the body of a drunk girl at a frat party and tries to run away when he's discovered. Nothing happens. Clay steals a gun from a police officer and holds up the school. Nothing happens. Clay escapes confinement at the psych hospital. Nothing happens. Clay is caught in the middle of a gun deal. Clay incites a riot. Clay beats the shit out of the sheriff's daughter's boyfriend. Clay torches the principal's car. Clay yells at the principal. F you, mother <laughs> Clay vandalizes the school with graffiti. Clay smashes the security cameras. Clay holds up the sheriff's office by telling everyone he has a gun. Basically, Clay can do no wrong. Whatever he does, it doesn't matter. There's almost no repercussions. So if nothing can happen. Yes. Matters like, why bother? My thoughts exactly, Clay. And even Alex, the person who actually murdered someone, gets away with it. Number four, the riots. I thought it was amazing how 13 Reasons Why was tackling the topic. Oh, did it pause for real this time? Okay. <laughs> of police oppression before the recent events of George Floyd and the BLM protests. However, the way they went about addressing it is unbelievably ignorant. So in retaliation for the school and parents basically spying on the kids and the ever-increasing presence of the police force, the kids stage a walkout. And instead of going home, they kind of just mill about outside the school. Let me pause it. Okay, so rewind when he's talking the part uh talking about the part with clay yes like that all those different reasons like every episode i'd like tweeted i like tweeted while i was watching it so if you follow my twitter you can go back and see me like commenting on stuff but 
it was insane the that clay kept doing all the shit and there was no repercussions from it like i thought like after he ran away from the mental hospital they might bring him back so he can get medicated or something like not that he needed medicated just give him another outlet to help him get over his basically PTSD um and yeah nothing happened like he did get a therapist thank goodness but he just it's just weird and that was that was also one of my biggest issues with this episode besides this part with the riot where it's like I thought was like perfect with the timing of its release and like you said Black Lives Matter happening so what does the but principal do to these unarmed, peaceful, demonstrating kids? The same Calls thing that the they're doing police. here. <laughs> Not only does he call the riot police, but he actually has them attack the kids. Can you like imagine teenagers? if this really? ever happened in real life? Can you imagine the army of Karens descending upon the police headquarters, wondering why their 14-year-old was clubbed in the head? How much press attention a school using riot police to beat up its students would get? But don't worry, no one faces any real nope. punishment. None. And they all still get to go to prom. Number five, Zach. Zach Dempsey was my personal favorite character this season. He's that stereotypical asshole jock, but deep down he has a heart of gold who will do anything to protect his friends. His bromance with Alex throughout the season was one of the highlights, and how he dealt with Alex kissing him just goes to show you how much of a stand-up guy he is. Yes. But there was one scene that completely dismantled everything yes. good about him. An entire season of liking this guy was thrown away because Charlie and Alex catch him trying to r-word the prostitute he brought to prom I that's fucked up i was talking to one of my co-workers about this too and i was like <sighs> he was like a, he's a shit show which is understandable after basically him getting a scholarship for football is out the window i'm pretty sure but I'm pretty sure his parents can afford him paying if he were to go. But this, this scene, I was like, really? That's when I was like, he really needs to fucking get his shit together. And it was gross. Especially when the whole reason Hannah took her life in this show or this book was written is because of... the R word, you know, sexual assault. And he, well, well, they never got together, but the girl that he was interested in, she also was. So you know the devastating effects it can have and you're just gonna do it to somebody just because she's a sex worker. She's not giving you consent just because that's her job doesn't mean when she's passed out drunk she's still gonna be doing her job no it's gross it's fucking disgusting i really have no idea why the scene was in here and it's obvious he was gonna do something really bad since yes. we catch him with his pants unbuckled and he locked the door so no one could get in to make matters worse there are no repercussions for him either just charlie chastising him to quote be better in addition to this his substance abuse problem is taken to the extreme where it borders on caricature there are maybe only two scenes in the entire season where he's not drinking we get it he has an alcohol problem but does does he need to have a hidden flask he takes a swig from in every scene? It almost becomes like a comedic element. Then there's the question of his super healing abilities. Take a look at this car crash he gets in at the end of episode 5. Like, yeah, I thought he was dead. I thought him and Clay were either dead or they were going to be bedridden. 
I'm surprised no one died here. The car totally flips multiple times over the edge of a cliff, and here is Zach the next day. Oh, and I also <laughs> forgot to mention that Clay was drunk driving here, and nothing happens to him. Or how about when Zach gets brutally punched in the face a dozen times by Diego near the end of the season? Here he is the next day. He should look like an, an MMA fighter after a match. Number six. Days. Oh, I guess I'm demonetized now. Yes, the final. Oh, you said it. <laughs> episode of the show is a heart-wrenching look at the effects of HIV AIDS on the character of Justin. But it's almost as though the writers never consulted with any medical professionals on how... Yes, that's why I was like, I was sad, but it was still just like, boom, you got AIDS, you did. And I'm like, okay. And I was like, I guess it wouldn't have been as gut-wrenching if they made mention of it in the beginning of the season or beginning yeah beginning of the season so but I feel like it was still would have been sad because he became so important to Clay and his life and everybody else in the group and how much he just grew as a person that it would still be it'd still be devastating and sad and you'd still be upset but it was just like Oh, he has AIDS? Oh, he's dead? But they don't give you like a timeline of when these things happen, so it just seems like immediately he's got AIDS, immediately he dies, and you're like, the fuck? It's a, it's late stage, so he's about to die, is basically all the information they give you. How this disease progresses. In the show, Justin is relatively healthy throughout the the entire season, only developing a small flu near the end and even having enough strength to attend prom and dance the night away. A week later, he's dead. In reality, <laughs> HIV takes about five, five to ten years before it develops into AIDS. And once you have AIDS, that process can take an additional one or two years before one dies. We're supposed to believe Justin's contraction of the virus and eventually death to AIDS happened in a matter of months. Justin dying of AIDS thus becomes a cheap plot device to kill him off. If the writers really wanted to do this storyline justice, they would have brought him in in episode 1, HIV positive, and we see how this affects him and his friends throughout the entire 10 episodes. It would have been way more emotional and better justice to to those who actually suffer from HIV and AIDS. Number seven, Tyler is a police informant. Yes, what better <laughs> person to deal with dangerous gun dealers than a high schooler? Throughout the season, we find that Tyler is working with the police as an informant to bring down illegal gun dealers. First, I question if this is even legal. Second, the ethics behind it are absurd. You want a kid doing these dangerous operations? At the end of Episode 7, Tyler even has a gun put to his head. Not to mention, this episode ends with a big cliffhanger of this dangerous dealer and the sound of a gunshot. But in the next episode, it's totally brushed off, and we don't know who, if anyone, got shot, and everyone kind of goes about their business as if nothing ever happened. Yeah. Number 8, Anticlimactic Ending. This whole season yeah, is centered was. around the kids trying to hide... It was... This whole season centered around the kids trying to hide the fact they were all involved with the death of Bryce from season three. Much of the season focused on Winston trying to uncover who the real killer was. Couldn't stand and it Winston. This sort of cat and mouse game, whether or not they'll be caught or if one of the kids will betray the others and go to the authorities. Everything seem to be building to some sort of climactic ending, but what we get that is kind of a dud, considering this was the main driving force of the season. Winston finds out Alex drowned Bryce and, and is okay with it. That's it. That's, that's the ending. Even Sheriff Diaz has enough and closes the case, even though the whole season it's hinted that he's secretly looking into things and trying to get to the bottom of it. Number nine, Clay. Clay sucks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the uh, sheriff I felt like he knew and they let him get away with murder because Bryce was a piece of shit and he deserved to die 
Is that really how the justice system works? I mean, for some people. Unfortunately, sometimes. Uh, but yeah. I felt like when they closed that case at the end and he said to the other police officer, he was like, yeah, we closed the case. And it's like, did you tell your boss your son was the one who killed Bryce? And, or did he figure it out and he's going to let him get away with it because he was just a teenager? Clay sucked too. <laughs> he was right. He's definitely right about that. I just need to say it, but this season there's just no real reason to root for him. Him. And the writing makes me not like him at almost every turn. Not only does he not learn from almost any of his mistakes, likely due to a lack of repercussions as I outlined above, but he sp spends most of the season talking about how love doesn't exist and it just hurts people, how he has no control, life sucks, etc. He's also a total asshole. My mom and dad, they're not your parents so stop pretending they are and are we totally going to forget that he left zach to die after the car crash a car crash he caused by being too drunk these decisions in my mind make me not want to root for him even though he eventually patches things up with zach and justin number 10 estella estella is a new character this oh season this, who is i the can, sister don't even remember i forgot all about her who died in jail last season after the kids pinned Bryce's murder on him. It's too bad she has absolutely no bearing on the story whatsoever. No, in I'm... fact, you could take her out of the season and it wouldn't change anything, which is a major bummer since there was so much potential here. She, she could have been actively working with the jocks, Winston, or even Sheriff Diaz to exonerate her brother who falsely was accused of murder. Instead, she's just kind of there with little to no impact on the main plot. Number 11, college interviews. With minor exceptions, oh. Yeah, she was only there to end up being um, Tyler's girlfriend. Most all the characters get into the schools of their choice, even though they have absolutely disastrous interviews with their respective colleges. <laughs> Not to mention they've just been involved in the craziest shit. Check out Justin's interview here. I had sex with, with men for money. Or how about Clay's here? Yeah, what, what do you like most about robots? Um, uh, making them uh, robots. <laughs> okay. I hate to sound like some old parent here, but what message does that send to kids? Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? <laughs> they can basically get away with murder, hold the school hostage, light their principal's car on fire but hey it will have no bearing on whether you get into college or not number 12 racism for a show that prides itself on tackling controversial and taboo subjects the show rarely addresses race even though much of the cast are poc in fact in the entire last season it's only addressed once why students of color were disproportionately singled out in the questioning. For a season that deals with an overbearing police presence at school, you'd think they'd venture deeper into how this affects students of color. For example, why is Diego arrested after he fights with Justin, but uh, Justin isn't? How come there isn't any backlash or even commentary on this? How come Tony, a person of Hispanic descent, is systematically harassed by one of the comps who calls him Padilla instead of Padilla? My problem here is that the show is basically screaming to discuss this, but doesn't go any further than a superficial level. And it's such a shame since you have an amazing cast of diverse perspectives, it could have sparked several really interesting character arcs and motivations. Number 13, Minor Quibbles. And I'm gonna leave you with a speed round of some of my minor problems. Like, why is the anti-sexual assault group called Ho? Why does Ani unexpectedly leave for four episodes, and is that tied into the backlash her character got when introduced in season three? Are we really going to believe Tony is a boxer? He's like four feet tall, and we mostly see him getting the crap kicked out of him. Was Diego really that dumb he was going to take on a school shooter with a baseball bat? Are we going to forget that Clay lost his virginity to the sheriff's daughter, and it's never brought up again, and it has no impact on the story whatsoever? And most importantly, did Clay not clean his pants after escaping? from the hospital <laughs> thanks for watching everyone please make sure to like and subscribe i always have new videos on the way 
For more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter at ThinkStoryYT. So, yeah, he mentioned most of the things that I wanted to talk about in this video. So, there's no need for me to add anything. Um, I think the last season could have been better and there were a lot of things that they could have um, addressed, did better, period. But the first season was amazing and then it was a slow decline into the fourth season, which was over the top with many things that didn't get resolved. which was which left the whole show as a total letdown in my opinion check it out if you'd like or if it's something that you watch frequently but yeah have you seen the latest season what did you think um do you think they handled any of the issues that they were supposed to tackle this season very well i don't think so but um are you happy that it's over? Because I feel like the next, the, if they were to do another season, it'd be trash. So, um, but thanks for watching my video. Be sure to leave all of your comments down below. Give this video a like, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.